The Mount Moon Review podcast, while a podcast about Pokemon, is not intended for children. You can expect some instances of adult humor, coarse language, and adult situations. Parental discretion is advised. everyone and welcome to episode 32 of the Mount Moon Review Podcast, the podcast where we do our best impression of a Snorlax on a long weekend. I am your host, the Razgrees, with my co-host, the Blue Duck Gold Duck, bringing you all the information you need to know about the world of Pokemon from the last week in about an hour. Duck, uh, we had some little minor technical difficulties getting started, but I think we're good to go. So let me ask you now, how was your week, bud? Uh, pretty chill week. Uh, lots of news, so I'm happy about that. Yeah, it seemed like as soon as the podcast was over last week, we both started just, like, just finding new news, and I was sending them off to you. And I was actually going through our chat log on Facebook and just looking at all the stuff that I was sending you over the past week and <laughs> making sure I got it all. It was kind of ridiculous in the amount of stuff that came out. But, uh, you know, I had a long weekend, and I did absolutely nothing. And I mean nothing. I sat around the house, and I set up a Minecraft realm for me, the wife, and the kids, and we just played Minecraft all weekend long. <laughs> uh, you got in on a little bit yesterday. That was kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah, I had my normal game night and stuff, so I wasn't, then... you know, playing. <laughs> but, yeah, I actually, this is my first time actually getting into Minecraft. That was kind of cool, though. But, of course, you somehow, even though you're, after we finally got the game downloaded for you, you still, in a matter of moments, managed to change your avatar into a gold duck. Yep. <laughs> I don't know how you did it so fast, but hey, whatever. <laughs> to each his own. Um, but we have a whole slew of stuff to go over this week, so why don't we get right into it. Uh, what do you got on the docket for us first? Uh, all right, so first in video games, uh, I wanted to make an announcement. This is a little late. Most people probably already know by now, but uh, there, we talked about hacked Pokemon last week. And those... Well, we've been talking about the, the hacked Pokemon being prevalent in the Wonder Trade system or Surprise Trade system now for for, for a couple months, really. Um, right. So this isn't anything new, but there's a little bit of a twist on it now. Well, last week was the problem with people had Littons and other like Pokemon that were in the coding, but they weren't released yet. Well, we, and, had, we uh... had that, and now we have a problem with... Uh, corrupted files, maybe? That's the best way to put it? Or it might be malicious. We don't know. Right. Oh, you, so you mean when you say malicious, you mean I, th I took malicious as hacking, but yeah, maybe malicious means somebody made a file that kind of screws with your game when you receive it in a, in a surprise trade. See, that's the way I, I'm interpreting this. And people do, okay. do stuff just because it gets their rocks off. I mean, let's it, face reality. Why do you create viruses? Well, it is a, whoa, duck, your mic just went cockeyed. Um, I'm going to let you reset your mic. Oh, there it went. <laughs> um, I got you back on there. So, but uh, there's two reasons you create a virus or something that, or, or some of those programs. That's either because you want to watch the world burn or you want to make money. That's it. And right. in this particular case, there's no monetary gain. So they're just watching the world burn. So basically ruining a really cool feature. <laughs> they're they're ruining a really cool feature. I've gotten some cool stuff out of Wonder Tr or Surprise Trade. I keep, I'm never going to get the I'm never going to get that right that, that we change the names on there. Um, yeah. But I, I can also look at this from another perspective, saying that they're trying to get all these hacked ones out there so that everybody and their mother has a hacked Pokemon in their system in some way, shape, or form. So there can't be a blanket uh, banning of the hacked Pokemon just being on your system. That's kind of how I'm looking at it too. Cause now if you were a uh, game freak or Nintendo or Pokemon, you'd have a heck of a hard time saying, well, if you have a banned Pokemon on your, on your switch, you know, you're going to, we're going to ban your device. You can't be part of anything now mm -hmm. because how can you control it? Well, most of the hacked Pokemon, you can't even tell they're, Hacked. Yeah. The, pro the problem with those, with the ones that, the 35 that were in the coding that weren't released, was that 
they weren't released yet. So They're obviously, obvious. if somebody has one, then it's hacked. Yeah. But now those Pokemon are available through Pokemon Home. But so. the people that had them, did they? Are they the ones that hacked them, or they just receive it in a trade? Well, you right, don't that's know. The problem. Yeah, that is a big problem, and the whole. I've been scared to death of using the the, the surprise trade system. I, I don't use it. I'm yeah. not using it right now, and I'm advising everybody else. And the sound of my voice, don't use it right now. It's just not worth it. Yeah, wait until they figure out a way to fix this, or if they don't, then just never use it. Yeah, and and the funny thing was is when all the news like IGN and everybody else broke it, even though we've been screaming about it for for two months now. <laughs> uh, there was somebody who jumped on the bandwagon showing a picture of a Mew in a um in a, in a max raid battle. They're like, here's a prime example, and everyone's just kind of replying, yeah, Mew can be in the game, you fool, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And my Mew is now in Pokemon Home, waiting to get imported. Nice. So go on. I won't. I won't interrupt again. Go ahead, Duck. The spotlight is yours. Uh, so if you receive one of these malicious files, uh, I read about people's save data being corrupted. I read about um, like the game will like every time you try to receive the Pokemon, like it'll say you have your Pokemon from Surprise Trade has arrived, and every time you try to get it it'll crash and then most of uh, the online connectivity you try to do will um, also fail so yeah. it kind of like ruins your you can't go online to play Pokemon anymore and that's if you and there's no way there's an, since you're not actually receiving the Pokemon there is no way to actually go in and like just wipe it out either they're gonna right. eventually... I guess some people have gotten them gotten past the game crashing point well at this point we're pretty uh, much waiting for game freak to put out a patch yeah, and some way to like zap those when they go into the cloud. Yeah, and then even that, I think it's going to be one of those things where they're not going to be in too big of a hurry to do it because they're cranky about everyone <laughs> using the hacked stuff. But you can't blame the people that are getting them on surprise trades because they have no way of no way of knowing what's coming in. There's yeah. no, there's no real way to manipulate the surprise trade system. Yeah, it's a little unfortunate. Yep. So do you have anything else in regards to that that massive warning we're giving to our listeners to not do the surprise trade system currently? That was it. And just, you know, don't consider people hackers just because they have those Pokemon now because they are all those Pokemon that, you know, were available, the 35, um, they're all available now. Yeah. With the, with the Pokemon Home coming out, um, it, they're, they're, everything's here. So that's just it. Uh, the other day when Pokemon Home came out, it was like a frantic. I, I saw it like 8 o'clock at night, and I was trying to get it before I went to bed, and I got it on some devices and not others. Um, I have a little bit of a warning about Pokemon Home, but we're going to talk about that when we get to it. Uh, so what do you have next on the trestle board there, Duck? Pokemon Home. Oh, okay. Officially released. <laughs> <laughs> so go on. What, what, keep going. What, what were your first impressions of Pokemon Home? I didn't use it yet. You haven't used it at all yet? <laughs> I wanted to be able to review it, but I don't have a 3DS charger, so I don't want to like pay for it and then you know, not be able to really do anything except transfer from Sword and Shield. So I got to get a 3DS charger soon. I told the people at Game Night to bring them, and everybody was like, oh, yeah, I forgot, or I they don't know where theirs are there. either. <laughs> they, they should be pretty, so, fit, pretty inexpensive at certain local retailers that deal with Yeah, I think it's like 10 bucks. I just, I didn't know. I, I was just like, I'll just get it. I'll just charge my DS from... You know, on game night on Saturday, but nobody brought one, so now I have to buy one. I just haven't been to GameStop yet. Some friends you got. I know, right? I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> I would have brought one. I, I promise you, Duck, I would have brought one. If I had an extra one, I'd send it to you. <laughs> no, it's not a big deal. Yeah. So It'd be harder um, to ship than it would be for me to just buy one. Just a little bit of warning when it comes to Pokemon Home, because I did something I didn't realize. Uh, was going to be a problem, and now it's a problem for me. So when I uh, originally downloaded it, I was able to get it on my Switch first. That was the first place I downloaded it. The second place I downloaded it was on my iPhone. Now, I also have an iPad, and when I got to work, um, I was able to finally get it on my iPad. So I figured, okay, I'll just have it on my phone for on the go, but I'll play with it on my iPad, you know, bigger screen, give me something to do at work other than work. And uh, I learned something very quickly. Mobile devices, you can only have it on one mobile device at a time. 
So what had happened was I downloaded my entire Pokedex to my phone, which there's my phone with my nice wallpaper. Uh, I downloaded the whole thing to my phone, got it all ready to go, was playing with it at home, blah, blah, blah. Uh, got to work, got it on my iPad, logged in, and it downloaded everything again. But now every time I try to log into Pokemon Home on my phone, it will give me an error message that says basically that all my stuff's already been put on their device. So you can only have... Uh, have it on one thing at the t one thing one mobile device at a time. Uh, like right now, I just tried logging in again. I got a new error message. It says you were logged in on a separate device. Do you want to log in using this device? Eh, let's just hit OK. And see what happens. Uh, now I got the original error message. This is a communication error that says you already transferred your data to a new device. Return to the title screen. Uh, I did find the workaround for it. If you really want to get it back on an original device, if you've done this, uh, you have to delete the app entirely. Uh, download it again and set it up as a whole new thing and it'll allow you to bring it back to the original device or any new device and but it'll make the the device you used previously not work as well so just be aware mobile Jeez. devices you can only have it on one at a time yeah that's nuts i didn't i had no clue about that see i like having uh, do you want to do a little review of it I... since you've used it well, I, see, I, I, the only thing I've really done with it so far was I logged into my Pokemon Bank and mm -hmm. I transferred everything from my Pokemon Bank to Pokemon Home. You still have the same problem in that you cannot transfer everything. You can only you have to keep at least one Pokemon in your um, in your party, so it, mm -hmm. you can't just pull everything off. So you got to put like a Pidgey or something in there. Uh, I also did the same thing with. Pokemon uh, Let's Go Eevee. I transferred everything with that way. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get my party, which is my best Pokemon, because I had to go in and, and reassign a, to just down to one. Uh, and unfortunately, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the Eevee or not. I, I haven't really played around with it enough to know. The uh, Being able to transfer them all uh, once you get into Pokemon Home, incredibly easy. And you can release them in batches, which is great. And it's, it's, it's overall, it's pretty easy interface to have. All the sprites have been updated, so it's not it's not as if they just you know took Pokemon uh, Bank and, and put a new face on there. It's it's really all new interface. Yeah, um, I saw some of those sprites are there are well, no, all the sprites I've seen are like never before used. So they made sprites specifically for home. That's what it does look like. Yeah, and yeah. it's pretty easy to use it really is uh it does have a sort a, a way you can filter it so you can put everything in dex order but it doesn't change them doesn't change their boxes around so if i have you know like uh, all my good ones in box five and i go ahead and hit the filter for uh, national dex order it will show me the list and but it will not move them out of those boxes that's perfect so that works perfectly for both both of us the way we were talking earlier yeah uh, on, a pre <laughs> on a previous podcast and I'm I'm very happy with that. Uh, it does have achievements to it. Um, they're like groupings of different things. I've got a bunch of them. Uh, I, I couldn't tell you without actually looking right now, and I'm not going to. Yeah, I looked at the list earlier. It's too long to put on here. <laughs> it really is. Uh, but I really, I'm not planning on doing a whole lot of playing with it. If it gives me some options for games inside the app eventually, I'll play them. Uh, people have been asking me for some reason, like they think I'm an authority on Pokemon or something. I don't know. Uh, but they've been asking me about uh, when Pokemon Go is going to allow integration in there. And it looks like that's not going to be around until summertime at least. So don't look for Pokemon Go until we hit summer. Right now, though, anything that's in Pokemon Bank can be transferred and anything from Let's Go Pikachu or Let's Go Eevee can be transferred. Pretty seamlessly, too. I, I wasn't upset. The only thing that really kind of confuses me is when I logged into Pokemon Bank, I renewed my, my year subscription about a month and a half ago, and it's now says I'm on a 30-day free trial. So I don't know if it's they just give you the 30 days and oh. extend it, or if they're just literally saying, okay, you logged into it now, you have 30 days before we delete this thing and we're done. Like they're trying to get out of the service entirely. I don't know. I'm I'm sure it's uh oh hmm I don't think they would delete it entirely because they want I think they want you to continue to bring your Pokemon up right I'm just saying I think they're Forever. I don't know if they're trying to get you to they probably gave everybody a free it's possible 
Yeah, okay, we have we have somebody in the chat that just told us uh they called the double to confirm this and it, the subscription will start again after the, your free trial. Everybody just gets a month right now. Outstanding. Thank you Verge 18 for that insight. Uh Verge is also a moderator in our Discord. So if you're interested in that, there's a link in the description below on our Twitch channel. Uh, great active chat, and that's enough of that plug. Keep going, Duck, with what you had prepared for Pokemon Home. Okay, so I just gave a basic breakdown just from like what I read about it. It's run by a new character called Grand Oak, which looks like, uh, to me, I thought it was a... It looks like Professor Oak if he was on the evil team in Pokemon Masters. It looks like... <laughs> Professor Oak decided he was going to jump into the DeLorean and, and make a sequel to the Back to the Future movies. <laughs> yeah. That, it really does. It looks like it, like if you took Professor Oak and put him uh, next to Doc Brown. And it, it's just like having, you know, the Oak on a Loa, you know, Oak with a tan. Now you got mm -hmm. Oak with some goofy haircut and glasses. Um, on yeah. top of the fact that now we got Professor Oak and Pokemon Masters, which we're going to talk about here in a little bit. Continue. Um, there are gift Pokemon you can get for completing certain things. And I don't know if this is all of them, but here's a, like a short list. Uh, you can get Pikachu as soon as you start the app. Uh, you get Pichu when you abstain, obtain your first sticker, which I'm not sure how you get stickers. Um, you get a Rotom the first time you deposit a Pokemon into GTS. You get an Eevee when you deposit your first Pokemon into the Wonder Box. And then you get the it's I think it's called the original form Magirna when you complete the national decks. Now the original form Magirna is something that I've always thought was a shiny version of it, but it's actually just a different form, kinda like Vavilion has different forms. It's the one where it's got like a Pokeball and it's like yellow tinted. Like the the circle of its dress is a Pokeball color. It really just looks like a like a Pokeball Transformer. Right, basically. And that's what... I, I think there's some kind of uh, lore with Magirna where it was like... It it led to the first Pokeballs being invented. Hmm. Well, there we go. I, I remember the movie with Magirna and Volcanion, but I don't really remember it. I just remember seeing it. And I think we saw... There was like a flashback to like ancient times and we saw um, the Magirna of that color outstanding in the movie oh, yeah, i don't think cool. it was released i you don't know, think that form was ever released other than here truth be told i haven't actually seen half of the movies <laughs> i really haven't and i i really need to i have the pokemon tv app i just gotta go back and watch them um i just haven't had a chance to do it yet i've been so engrossed with other things i don't really have much time for television <laughs> Uh, we had somebody saying that they don't think Magirna was ever confirmed, and Magirna was in the movie, and then it was given to us um, in Sun and Moon as an event. Hmm. So what else are we going down the list here? Um, so those older Pokemon, like I said, the 35 different ones, and then as um, on top of that, the... Uh, a, um, the Galarian and like Cantonian and Alolan forms of the Pokemon that are in the Galar decks, they're all available now. So you can tr transfer those to um, Sword and Shield. And what's going to happen, I believe it's March 3rd. It's sometime early March. The VGC rules are going to change to include all those Pokemon. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have like a quarterly update to the VGC rules now. Uh, with regards to the Pokemon, they're going to be added periodically into Sword and Shield. I, I expect a big update this summer with the, the various expansion packs that come out. But it seems like right. we are going to, about every three months, um, if those of you that are in the professor community will understand that there is an update that comes out. And typically it just says, no changes this quarter. Right. I think the days yeah. <laughs> of seeing that, that text are gone. I think every quarter we're going to be seeing an update now on the VGC that's uh that's a very good point because this is three months in they're changing it and then three months from now is when the first dlc comes out in june yeah so i, I think that's they're going to run on a quarterly update if i had to make a, a, an educated guess yeah um some of the honorable mentions of pokemon that are added now for vgc is uh incineroar is probably at the top um blastoise might 
you know, do something with this new move set and uh, Venusaur too. So we're getting we're getting some starters back. We're getting the Kanto right, starters. Right. Yeah. Back. The all three of the um Alola starters and the rest of the Kanto starters are 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 in that group. Um. Oh, and yeah, uh, new moves, uh, move sets for Pokemon are also being updated. If uh, if a Pokemon can learn the move through any any means, like through any means obtainable in game, like egg moves or anything like that, they are now legal in VGC. The only thing is the Pokemon has to have uh, the it has to be produ- the file of the Pokemon has to be produced in the Galar region, so you can't just transfer in Cinderor and automatically have it. You have to transfer in Cinderor and then breed it. Yeah, you're gonna have to breed it, get your dittos out, and get your ditto decks out, get to one you need, you make sure you get all your yep. your items correct, and then basically <laughs> make a new one. Uh, if, if it hasn't originated in the Sword and Shield game with the Galar uh, logo on there, that that's gonna be the big determination whether you're gonna be able to use it in the VGC or not. Is that having that Galar tag? Now, right. like you were saying, you can just simply if you have a perfect whatever and you transfer it in and you can do what you do with dittos and, and everstones and everything else. Uh, that's, that's how you're going to be able to get it in there. You're not going to be able to use your trusty blastoise from, from red and blue, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> they've, uh, they've been implementing the symbol for region, the regional symbol ever since uh, X and Y. So that's something a lot of uh, veteran players will be used to by now. Yeah. And it's just, I think it's going to be a lot of confusion for a little while with people having Pokemon home as this, this system of bringing all these other things in and they're not going to have the ability to use them right away. And I think that's going to lead to a lot of confusion for people that are new to the VGC because there is a lot of new players in the VGC. Now Uh, we went from some events where you might have 50 to 60 competitors to now having three to 500 competitors and I think that just goes to show the popularity of Sword and Shield. But I think that number is going to come down, but I don't think it's going to come down dramatically. I think at least for the rest of the year, we're going to see pretty high numbers on the VGC into the 2021 season, which starts in July or August. Oh, season starts in July. Worlds is in August. Right. That's right. They, they, they did change it so yeah. that the season starts before Worlds for some reason. Anyway, <laughs> they they had the whole points thing last year where the, you you were collecting points for the next season before World Championships, and... right? Which confused a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. So what you got next? Uh, next uh, is the we talked about the silhouette that Cora Cora was going to reveal, and a couple days later, sure enough, we received the silhouette of the new mythical Pokemon, and uh, to me it looks really interesting. Uh, I think it looks. It, it looks, looks more like Zoraora than Mew, in my opinion. It does. It looks like Zoraora some, in some way, shape, or form, but uh, it's supposed to be new. So I don't think it's... I don't think it's tied to Zoraora. I'm just saying like it's that kind of design rather than like the pixie sprite um, kind of design like Mew and Celebi and Jirachi. Like, for a while, that was the only kind of mythical Pokemon we got. Yeah, it was the cutesy. It was like a sprite. Yeah. yeah. This one, if, if it's color scheme... It isn't yellow and black. I'll be shocked just by the just by the way it's characterized now. See, I'm picturing red and purple. It looks a lot like a Dragon Ball Z character. I don't know the Dragon Ball Z character's name, but it totally reminds me of this one dude from Dragon Ball Z that's like red and purple. Red and purple. Who the heck could that have been? I'm trying to remember Dragon Ball Z right now. <laughs> I think it's like from GT or something. Like oh, the way... so it didn't exist. Gotcha. Yeah. We, we just pretend that doesn't exist. So uh, people in chat are saying that, it, that the image has been leaked. Uh, we won't be showing it on here if we do get it, um, but I haven't actually seen it yet, but I'm being told it looks like a monkey and it's gray and something else. Um, so there was a another screenshot of our, like a leak, not leaked, but like a teased image from like officially revealed image from the Pokemon Coco movie, which is the next movie we're going to get. And it, it shows this kid that I imagine was probably like raised by this thing. Um, this kid has the same wrapping, 
like a similar like he has stuff wrapped around his arm and it looks just like the bulky part of the the new Pokemon's arm. Okay, that makes a little bit of sense then. I can so see it looks like happening. it's he wrapped vines around his wrist. I'm gonna look just like Dad. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> oh, that's, that's possible. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, if that the image of that kid could give us a uh, speculation of what to do, what type do you think it's gonna be? Oh bloody heck! I don't know. I mean, <laughs> what have what have traditionally all the mythicals been though? Um, probably mostly psychic. It, but it's kind of changed a lot in the since Gen Four. I mean, this looks like a fighting type almost, doesn't it? I was thinking fighting. I see. So I think in like dark fighting or dragon, or a combination well, of that. I don't think it's going to be dragon. So I can yeah, see just the spikes, but yeah, the tail doesn't really scream dragon type. I'm thinking fighting type. I think that's what I'm going to okay. go with. I'll go with fighting type. But I'm just looking at an outline and making an, and making a guess. Maybe grass. Sure, why not? Because of the vines and stuff. That's possible too. <laughs> or maybe water because it has battle toad feet. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> the, the feet kind of reminded me of Greninja, just the way it sits yeah, up like that. I got that too. But uh, this is an audio podcast, so <laughs> let's not keep <laughs> speculating on an image, and let's talk a little bit more about what you got on the trestle board. Uh, Pokemon, there's a new Dynamine file that came out of Pokemon Home. Yeah, and we found out about this just before we went live. Really, right? Yeah. Uh, so I guess you, it. <laughs> you, you, I, I got nothing on you. You, you have all the information on this one. So you go ahead and uh, I, give us what you got, albeit limited. I briefly looked at a list. Like we saw, I, I saw, I found the list like 20 minutes before we started recording. Um, and what it was is basically a list of Pokemon that you know aren't in Sword and Shield, but got updated move sets, and it's almost every single Pokemon. Um, the only notable thing missing from there is a lot of Gen 4 Pokemon. So what I'm thinking is the Pokemon that got new moves, maybe they're going to be added to Sword and Shield eventually. At first I was like, well, this is like a complete list. So they just added new moves to all the Pokemon, even if they're available or not. And then when I got to Gen 4, basically the entire Pokedex is missing. And we know Gen 4 remakes are probably coming eventually. Yeah, so it I, makes I'm, sense that they wouldn't have updated movesets yet. For longevity purposes and the fact that we know we're not going to get a Sword and Shield or a, rather a Switch game every year. That's just not not in the cards. The development time on takes too long. I, I think the thing we're most likely going to end up seeing is similar to what they're doing with Pokemon Go and trying to extend the longevity of the game by adding chunks of stuff here and there over time. We already know we have the two expansion packs coming. Uh, that's going to take us through the end of the year. I'm looking at sometime in 2020, we're going to start seeing new batches of remakes coming out and be available. The The Switch is meant to be a device that's used online. It's great that it's a handheld, but it is designed around having that that, that environment and ecosystem to be online. Uh, and, and this is face reality. In the, in, the, in the markets that it's being sold in, people have Wi-Fi capability now. It's almost to the point now where it's it's a, it's a it's a basic need. I don't want to say that because it's not. You can live without Wi-Fi. Trust me, I've done it. But uh, if you know people now that don't have Wi-Fi, you look at them and you go, really? Why not? Uh, where I live now, there that was part of the when we were house hunting was we had to make sure we actually had cable internet. A lot of people around here have satellite because the the infrastructure is just Oof. not here and i told them no way in heck would i do that so <laughs> part of the when we were house hunting was we had to tell them yeah we were asking the different rental agencies you know does it have cable internet well it's got si nope don't don't care don't care about satellite it's got to have cable internet <laughs> and mm. it's not great as we've experienced here on the podcast before we know this but i think that's primarily what we're going to see is everyone crying and screaming oh net bring back the national decks they're going to they're going to you're sure going to have to pay for it and it's going to be a little <laughs> bit at a time and as long as you are uh keeping people's interest on the game 
that, that's a good thing. Engagement is a great thing for your metrics. And it's going to keep the interest for the next game and high. And we're going to see the next game probably in 2023, if I had to make a guess. But they got to do that. They got to get through that time period or 2022, rather. Uh, I was going to say. I'm, 2022. Uh, and But you got to keep people's interest for that entire time period. So you think there'll be a second year of where uh, there'll be a year where they release almost the rest of the Pokédex in a, in a second DLC package? Um, I think you'll see similar, maybe not full flushed out expansion packs like we're seeing with uh, Armor and uh, what's the other one? Ar- Isle of Armor and uh, Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra. Crown Tundra. I don't think we're gonna see fully flushed out expansions like that, but I think uh, we are gonna see. Oh no, something you know, research has happened. Now we're gonna start. You might start seeing Pokemon you haven't seen before in the wild. <laughs> See, I don't think that would do like a whole year of uh, interest, but I mean, it'd be cool if they do that. I would imagine we'd probably get uh, the next game, w- whether it's like a Let's Go like thing or Sinnoh remakes. <laughs> Let's in, go uh, Sinnoh! <laughs> 2021. Well, it'd probably be Let's Go Johto. Let's go Johto! Maybe. <laughs> it's quite possible. I mean, your guess is as good as mine. Uh I'm I'm I look at things from not from the Pokemon perspective, but from the video game uh, perspective. How video game companies typically like to operate, but uh, Game Freak being a Japanese company, uh, primarily, they uh, they don't think like the rest of the market. And the Japanese game industry is much different than the American game industry. So it's it's anything's really possible. <laughs> Just traditionally, we get a game in some way, whether it's like a you know an add-on or whatever. Uh, yeah, like a, a not a main series game or not. Uh, we usually get at least one a year. And then I figured our DLC would be, would, you know, check that box for this year. It's very possible. Let's, uh, let's wait and see what we're writing about in our year. Remember yeah. to look back on episode 32 and figure out which one of us was right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. That is it for video game. Oh my Lord. Lord, Next is Lord. TCG. And let me, uh, let me tell you, uh, TCG wise, I recently just logged back in the PTCGO. Mm-hmm. Big update. They've actually uh, redone the look of it finally. Uh, it's been a long time since they've done that. Uh, as it seems to be running a lot smoother. Oh my lord, has the, the economy in that system gone haywire? Like, absolutely freaking haywire. What do you mean? Uh, trying to get cards for the most basic um, modern meta decks in this that are right now in standard. Uh, I have upwards of probably 300 packs in my uh, my collection right now that are up for trade, and I can't even afford half the cards I need. Not even not even a quarter of the cards I need. What price you you're trying to do it right as uh, a set's coming out? Yeah, it's a it, it, it's not even that. It, you if you go in there and look at the trade. Uh, trade market right now it's it, it's all out of whack right now people are, are spending money hand over fist it's ridiculous uh, oh, well I mean that's one of the problems with the user generated market yeah I, I mean it used to be you could go in there and get most of your what you needed for a dollar or two uh, not anymore uh, hopefully that, that gets settled down and evens out uh, as soon as people get it through their wallets that this isn't an, a sustainable thing to do and i'm not gonna it, once people stop spending it and stop making those outrageous trades then it'll come back into a more normalized situation but until then uh i'm gonna be playing expanded <laughs> have you tried making offers with your packs based on what's like what you think is fair i haven't because mostly because i can't i don't know what is fair right now uh we'll no. just we do have a fr- whatever you. We do have a friend of the podcast, um, atrocious. Uh, he does a, a, an online market where he actually values the online cards. Um, as soon as I find a link of that, I'll post it in my social media. But it, it, it's pretty much the gold standard when it comes to uh, what the, the PTCGO values are going to be. And I haven't even had a chance to look at that yet. I looked at the, I looked at PTCGO trading market and said, yeah, not so much. Closed it, and I said, I'll go play play it later. <laughs> <laughs> but so we got news on TCG front, barring PTCGO. What what do you have on the uh, on the actual physical front? Okay. 
So I guess a interview, a guy, somebody from IGN did an interview with the Pokemon company and wanted to know about the changes they made for the Sword and Shield expansion. Um, and, you know, mainly the thing, the biggest change was the removal of fairy types. And I guess they said they wanted the re one of the biggest reasons they removed fairy types was because they want to focus on weakness for the Sword and Shield block. They want people to hit for weakness. So to make it easier, they basically made 80% of the Pokemon weak to five different types. And that's, uh, I don't have the type list of well, types in front of me. When but... you think about it, I mean, look at it when you're playing uh, on the VGC side. You are typically looking for weakness and what is weak and strong to whatever. Uh, and, and if you go back to the way their game was originally set up, um, like, like Series 1 and 2 and up, I think, through season five, uh, Series 5, it was all uh, rock, paper, scissors. You know, if I'm going to have a fire type, I better have a, a water counter to it and, and stuff like that. And it started expanding, 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 expanding. And then weakness started becoming less and less important. I mean, how many times have you completed a game and then uh, you and the, your opponent go, oh, wait a minute. We, that, I was weak to that the whole time. And nobody realized it because nobody even looks at it really anymore. I will tell you what I I often I have this thing it's in my league it happens all the time where I'll walk past I'll be looking at people's board states I'll see a Pokemon with damage on it in front of a Pokemon it's weak to and be like did you guys calculate weakness and a lot of the times it's like oh crap weakness is a thing who knew <laughs> yeah so, yeah it happens it, a I mean lot. that's that's right and my argument for this is. In the games, there's 18 types. Yeah. So, and, and like, not every move a Pokemon uses that's super effective is going to knock out the Pokemon. I think times two weakness in TCG is ridiculous. And the, the fact that they're treating it like a good thing is making me even more glad that I stopped playing. You love it and you know it. You're going to go back to I, it. I don't. I'm not. Every every change they have made has been, in my opinion, for the worse. Yeah, I, I'm not I'm not really uh, down with all the changes that are happening, but they are happening. So if you are going to continue to play in the TCG, you need to adapt. And this isn't like a new concept. Uh, all TCGs go through these r rule restructurings at some point or another. Um, I will say that uh, the Pokemon Company has a tendency to dig its heels in, though. So once they've made a decision. It's gonna happen, and that's all there is to it. Yeah, it's just I don't I don't see the benefit to we. All that's gonna happen is there's gonna be like one really good deck, and then something's gonna be able to counter it, and then the good deck is just gonna put something in to hit, hit its counters for weakness, and that deck is gonna remain good. Quite possibly, there's people out there it's... that are much smarter than I am when it comes to building decks. So we'll see what comes out of the meta on that end. But we're already seeing stuff changing with the advent of the no supporter on turn one rule. Um, they did not bring back the attack on turn one like was predicted, and not yet, not yet. And it's already people are getting you know turned on their ear when it comes to these changes because some people have only ever played it this way, and I can only imagine that it was very similar to the times when they changed it from not being able to attack on turn one. At least then right. it wasn't something that altered the the game state because I, I attack all oh, you can't attack. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. I forgot. No big deal. But now it's, I'm going to play, you know, Marnie. And you're like, Oh, you can't play a supporter. Well, now I know you have a Marnie. <laughs> right. um, it, it's, it's things that are, are actually hurting people a little bit worse now than when, when that rule change took effect. So just, uh, you're, you're going to see changes. You're going to have to adapt. Uh, I'm not, playing tcg right now I, I wish i was but there's nothing local and i'm not willing to drive you know 100 miles for a league hmm. yeah you know, i mean i just every time they update something um a lot so we saw them take fairy out they changed oh we lost duck <laughs> they don't want so many types represented in Psychic types. Hey, Duck, and... we lost you there for about 10 seconds. So you said when they, they, they took out fairy type and then we lost you. Okay, they took out fairy types and added psychic types. Or uh, they 
they took fairy, they added fairy to psychic, and then they turned poison types into dark types because they didn't want so many Pokemon, um, you know, in the psychic type section. And oh, I need to get my train of thought back. Okay, so the reason they took fairy out is because fairy. Am I still there? We can hear you. We just don't see your you see your video right now, so we're good. Keep going, keep talking. We got okay. you. So the reason they added fairy type was because, or they took fairy type away, is because um, the only thing weak to fairy was dragon, and they don't want something that only interacts with one other type. So like the way you know fire is strong against steel and and grass types, essentially they want stuff to hit more than one thing for weakness. Right, and uh, from the way it sounds like, we're going to get rid of dragon types? It's looking like it. Uh, that was not confirmed or even talked about, but every dragon type printed since Sword and Shield came out in Japan has been represented by its other type. So, for instance, they just got a Dragapult that's a psychic type to represent the ghost. Um, I think their buy a box promo for uh, the Sword and Shield base set was a Rayquaza, but it's a normal type, which rep represents the flying type. Before they added, um, before they added dragon type to TCG, most dragons were represented by normal type. Right, uh, and can I just say, and you touched on this before the podcast, the Japanese cards are so much sexier than ours. Oh, much, much. The holographic around the border is is such a nice touch. Well, just the, the ugly yellow. <laughs> yeah, I, I hate yellow. So, but yeah, we do. Have, if you watch the video version of the podcast, you'll see we do have the, the Japanese Rayquaza card, and it is represented as a normal type uh, with colorless energy. So, we are essentially. It looks like we're doing away with dragon types next, as a, as we've just got rid of fairy Maybe. types. Maybe. Who knows? Say, they I say it's confirmed. doing something different. But yeah, generally, back in the day, before Dragon Type came out, it was a normal type, and it needed two different energy types to attack. But no more. Yeah. The, I think the only good thing out of the type change thing they're doing is uh, Psychic Types are no longer weak to Psychic Types. That was that weird. Was stupid. That was just That's weird. Been, it though. didn't make sense to me. I mean, I, I always thought maybe Psychic and Ghost should have been against each other, but now Psychic and Ghost are the same bloody thing. Right, so it's it's because psychic types are strong against poison, which is represented by psychic, and ghost types, also represented by psychic, are strong against psychic. So there was a lot of interaction there where they were strong against each other, but it was always bullcrap when a Malamar, you know, or, yeah, Malamar, Giratina. Never mind, those are bad examples. Well, and, and there, folks, that is the closest you're ever going to hear the Duck swear on this podcast. <laughs> he said bullcrap. Mark that on your calendars. <laughs> <laughs> I can swear. I've heard you do it. You just don't do it in public. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I took no I was one, swearing I, last night I, in Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, I think we all were. I especially liked it when my wife was on the other side of the house and we heard her die on my mic before we saw that pop the little alert pop up on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Oh, uh, she wasn't pleased. <laughs> But yeah, it took me, what, about a year and a half, two years before I heard you actually swear? Yeah, I, I remember your reaction. I thought you were a Jehovah's Witness or something. No. <laughs> no, I just choose to, you know. Live a clean life. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Improved, as you said last week. Ah. That, that was about <laughs> a different subject entirely, which we're not going to go into because this is a 13 plus podcast, not 18 plus. So, uh, what is, what's next on the trestle board for you there, Ducky? Uh, next and final note is that we found out what Pokemon was going to be paired with Professor Oak and Pokemon Masters. And it, it was not expected. No. I mean, it makes sense when you think about it, but it wasn't It wasn't one of my predictions. It was Mew. 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 <laughs> Which is pretty cool to have, you know, they're adding a lot of legendary Pokemon to that. And, you know, there's a lot, probably a lot of people that have this free app now that were never, you know, aren't used to getting legendary Pokemon in the game, especially Mew. Yeah. And just want to say that, yes, I called it. It was Professor Oak. Uh, 
obviously. I mean, it didn't yeah. take it didn't take a rocket surgeon to figure this one out. I mean, <laughs> it was Professor Oak's head, and the trailer came out. Uh, had the professor walking out, you know, saying, "I'm tired of all my research. I need to get back to battling," or something like that. I don't remember exactly. Um, but as soon as we get introduced, and uh, I went ahead and logged back into Pokemon Masters, which I don't do except for every time that Duck says there's something new about it on the podcast. <laughs> and uh, you actually get Oak as soon as you roll in. As soon as you roll in, yeah. it said, here's Oak and here's Mew. Good luck. So it, just if you have if you have Pokemon Masters account you haven't played with in a while, log in. Uh, you'll get one free Professor Oak and um, a Mew. He'll be a three star, uh, and you're gonna have to roll to get more and level him up obviously yeah they actually uh changed the way they do this event instead of like doing a battle against oak over and over and over again over like the and last... over and over <laughs> yeah like the last the the events for Quaza, so Sogali, so and uh mewtwo were um you actually just have to use him in battle so you can like get a lot of other stuff done while you're grinding out oak materials. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's amazing. That's 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 the way to fix it because I was getting really tired of, you know, always pressing the same thing over and over again just to just to get the thing so I could start using the thing. Thanks for the thing. I want to use it for the thing. I got to do this thing. Yeah, it was, yeah. it was a pretty repetitive game. Yeah, I actually kind of fallen like I got oak and then Meh. <laughs> really, when it comes to Pokemon Masters, I'm kind of meh altogether. I, I yeah. did the original story. I got uh, like some hellacious pulls just from being me, I guess. I don't know. And <laughs> then it was just kind of like, it's just so repetitive. Which, Pokemon in general is repetitive. But this is beyond anything we're, we've been accustomed to. <laughs> and Well, I mean, yeah, it's a mobile game. It's I a mean, mobile. it's yeah, it's it's not bad. Like I really don't think it's bad. I just I'm not in a place right now where I'm. I think the biggest thing is I can't use it on my normal phone. Have you tried to download it again recently? Maybe there's been no. an update. I doubt it, but I'll try. I know the phone. I can upgrade to a to a real phone now. So yay! <laughs> but you know the the biggest argument against the whole thing is yes, it's annoying for this, this, this. It has good sides, but the biggest thing is. Uh, what they're saying in chat right now is it's free. It is a free yeah, game. It doesn't cost anything. You can put money into it. I think you dropped 10 shekels on it. Uh, I haven't yep. dropped anything on it and I can still go in and play it right now. Yeah, no, so it's not bad. I, I don't think it's bad by any stretch of the imagination. No, you know, there's, there's really challenging stuff to do that, you know, you can grind up to get it and then go on. And... Yeah. I don't know. I'm it's, not displeased with the game at all. It's it's a nice bathroom bathroom time occupier. <laughs> Let's put it to you that way. It's, there's a lot of games I have that that's the only time I ever pull them out. Uh, I have a chess app on my phone, and the only time I ever play that is when I'm alone with my thoughts in the room with the porcelain throne. What? You keep laughing. <laughs> like you don't no, go I'm to the just bathroom. Chat. <laughs> no, I have a bathroom. I was just reading the chat. <laughs> oh, people can lay my my childhood had zero free games. I'm older than all of you. <laughs> <laughs> I had to blow in my cartridges. <laughs> What's a cartridge? Yeah, really. <laughs> in, in fairness, Nintendo's never really gotten away from the cartridge. They've just made the cartridge smaller. Except for one yeah. instance where we had small discs. <laughs> Two. Which was the other the one? The Wii. Wii U. Oh, did the Wii U have small discs? Yeah, I guess it did, didn't it? Yeah, I never. I didn't have that. Well, I, the I, Wii had regular discs. Yeah. I see. So. I, I I got out of the ecosystem. I think my last Nintendo system was the sixty four, and then I hadn't got anything Nintendo until the Switch came out. Which I love my Switch. I love my Switch. Uh, the, later this year, we're looking at having the new uh, Xbox Series X and the PlayStation Five come out uh looking for that holiday yep. 2020 i'm not sure i'm getting any of them i'm not getting them on release oh heck no lord no <laughs> um but There's i no games but i really don't believe i'm gonna be uh i don't i probably won't get them I, i'm very I'll probably get a PS5 eventually 
I am very happy with my Switch and my uh, my Oculus Quest. That's enough for me. The uh, the Switch gives me the portability. I can lay in bed and play with it, or I can sit over here, hook it up to my computer, and play it here. I can take it places with me. Um, the problems with it are easily fixed, uh, like such as someone saying in chat about the uh, the Joy-Con drift. I should have made a video of it, but I didn't. Um, but I performed surgery on one of my Joy Cons the other day, and I replaced the the joystick in there. And all told, the kit with the the new joy joystick, two joysticks, and all the tools uh, was like twelve dollars. And as long as you got a little bit of dexterity left in your fingers, you can do this. It's not hard. Um, the instructions are pretty clear, and you can find anything you want on YouTube and watch somebody else do it. Probably the reason I didn't make the video. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it's not that difficult to fix them. And I, I agree wholeheartedly it shouldn't be this problem. I shouldn't have to fix this. But it's something that does exist. So it's not that difficult to do. Were the screws in the Joy-Con sealed? No. They were standard screws. They are really small, but they they were standard screws. Oh. And the kit that they I got... They didn't have, like, black on the tip of them or anything like that? Not that I noticed. No. Okay. No, it was I pretty... was just curious. No, it didn't look like they were secure. Like there, there was any kind of security yeah. thing on there at all. Like tamper proof or anything like that. Didn't appear to be. There was no stickers anywhere. Um, and I've put it all back together, and you wouldn't know it. You would never know I opened it. Yeah, I mean, if you have the ability to fix your own stuff, fix your own stuff. But I always warn people before they do that, or before I fix something for somebody that like I, I'm not a professional. I'll probably fix it, but if something goes wrong, I don't want to be liable for the... For <laughs> you know, the, I, I had a friend who, <laughs> uh, with the original 360, uh, the Red Ring of Death, those of you who are familiar, I feel your pain, I experienced it as well. The A friend of mine said, hey, I'm going to... I'm, You know where I can get a cheap one? Mine broke. I said, what's wrong with it? And he told me, and I said, well, what are you going to do with it? Said, I'm going to throw it away. Let me try to fix it first. Uh, I ended up having to manufacture a bit to get the thing open but once i did i managed to fix it with uh nine pennies and some electrical tape and some double-sided sticky tape i fixed the red ring of death <laughs> uh, it was an x-clamp issue for those of you who know anything about those uh those devices you'll know exactly what i'm talking about i literally ran out of my apartment with this xbox above my head screaming bill gates is my <laughs> I didn't finish. I'm not going to finish it here. Uh, but if you have the capability to follow instructions, the you can find the, the 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 method to fix these devices relatively cheaply. And like I said, with my Joy Cons, I was able to fix mine uh, for under twelve dollars, and I still have an extra joystick, so I can fix another one. With all the Joy Cons in my house, who knows? That's probably going to become useful to me here eventually. I got four of them in this room, and each of the boys has two, so I got eight Joy Cons here in the house. <laughs> all things considered, you know, I'm still pretty unhappy that one out of eight had a failure to it. But uh, if you can fix it, uh, you should give it a try. It's not that difficult, and it's better than buying new ones or sending them away and then having Nintendo say, "Well, it's out of warranty. We're gonna." Uh, Send. We're not going to send this back to you, but we will sell you one, sell you one for you know forty dollars or what have you. Right. Yeah, I actually have the limited edition Joy Cons and for the uh, Smash Bros. Switch, and I don't want to send them in because one of them is drifting, and I don't want to send it in because you know I I know I'm not getting those ones back. Probably not. Um, I can send you the link, Duck, if you'd like for the for the kit. <laughs> uh, it's not so bad that I I can't play, but. Maybe I'll eventually I'll need it. Right on. Well, do you have anything else for us from the world of Pokemon since we're going on a rabbit hole of uh, uh, no, nope, that's fan that's consoles. It. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, I think that is going to wrap us up for this week. I, I'd like to thank everyone who stopped out for us. Uh, probably by the end of this week, uh, if you follow our YouTube channel at all or any of our social media, you're going to see our next. Uh, adventure into the world of online entertainment and if you are a fan of anime in any any way shape or form I highly suggest that you 
uh, keep a track of our social media, and you're going to be seeing a new show that's not going to be live on Twitch, but uh, you will see it uh, on all of our various outlets. And I really think that this is going to be an enjoyable program, and Duck, myself, and Sadar from our chat have been working on it pretty uh, pretty long, tiresome hours. <sighs> And we still need a uh, fourth person that would be interested and has experience with broadcast to uh, join us for another uh, show of sorts. <laughs> if you're a fan of Dungeons & Dragons in any way, shape, or form, uh, please get in contact with us. We may have a, a, a space for you. Duck, do you have anything else you want to go over or anything else you want to yell at me about? Because you look angry. Nope. I'm not angry. You want to swear? No. I can bleep you just once? No. You okay. can't bleep me on Twitch. I can't bleep you on Twitch, but I can bleep you on YouTube. Not that I want to, because it's a pain in the butt, because then I have to re-format re, uh, the entire thing, then I have to render it all down. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Your mother is a bleep. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Duck, get us out of here. All right, guys, until next time, just remember, if it's too good to be blue, it's probably gold. Have a week. Just because your card is magic, you think you're sick because you killed my life orb. Baby, do you dare to not flinch? Because I'm coming at you like a dark pulse. I know you're going to throw, going to throw. You're going to throw a stone, throw a stone. But I got that lucky chance. There's no critical hits.